We got Jeff Neal back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Bilal Muhammad at UFC on ESPN Plus One on January 19th. Jeff, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Now, did I, I catch you today on like a day off? Because I know you have that, uh, you know, the, the, the day job, uh, you know, uh, working at Moxie's and all that, and you got training. Uh, what, what does today look like? Today is, uh, what, Wednesday? Um, I'm, I'm going to, I just got done working out, training. Uh, I'm going to relax, and then uh, I got work tonight, actually, at 5 o'clock. Okay. Does it, it must be a, a tough time of year because I know it usually gets busier during the holiday season, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, it gets way busier. And that, that's, the time I, that's the time to work, you know, that's the time to make the money that you need to make. It'll help me out. You know me. I'll be buying more gifts for my family and stuff like that. Exactly. I like the mentality there. That's great. Um, so you were supposed to fight Luke Jumo uh, at the um, on that UFC Fight Night 142 card, and he ended up getting injured. Um, I guess the plan was to just uh, you know get get you a fight as soon as possible, and this was the next available fight. Uh, yeah, I'm, I honestly don't know my coach's plans. My coach is my manager, so he does his thing. I just go to the gym, show up and train, and whatever he has for me, he has for me. There's really no plan. It just kind of happened. Yeah, and, and how did that affect training? Because obviously, you, you you know, you think you have this fight coming up, you're getting all ramped up, and then you find out it doesn't happen. Like, did you take any time off, or did you just continue to train and, uh, you know, keep uh, grinding? I, I didn't take time off, but I did dial it back a little bit as far as how intense I was going. Just because I knew I was going to have this fight coming up, I didn't want to burn myself out. So I, I just, like, I've been kind of maintaining my uh, cardio and everything. And then I just finally started pushing it really hard last week. So, And in some ways, it's worked out a little bit better because you're on the first UFC on ESPN card. I know it's the Plus uh, app thing, but that's still pretty awesome. And then you're fighting Bilal Muhammad, man. I mean, how excited were you to get this opportunity? Because in some ways, this is a way bigger opponent than Luke Jumo. Yeah, I was I was really excited to get this uh, opponent. Like, he's he's a tough dude. He's really tough. He's dangerous. He's uh, pretty much good everywhere. Great cardio. Great defense. He has a... Uh, awesome uh, fight IQ. It's a good fight for me, and he's ranked number 30. Uh, if I go in there and get the finish, uh, I, I, I'm going to be standing pretty good in the UFC. I agree. And uh, how do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? I feel like I match up really well. Uh, we're the same height. Uh, I got a longer reach. Um, I just got to make sure I can keep up with his pace, and then I should be fine. He, he's had a lot of good wins in the UFC. I think the only uh, setback he had was against uh, Vicente Luque. I know he lost, I think, his debut against uh, Joban as well. But why do you think so many fighters have had trouble putting him away or, or getting a win over him? Because he, he doesn't quit. He has a, he never quits. I've seen all his fights. He goes just as hard in, in the third round as he does in the first round. And a lot of fighters, they start to fade. Even though they're beating him the first round, they start fading. And then that's when he comes back and wins. You're known as sort of a highlight reel machine. We've seen that in your last couple of fights, especially. Um, does the game plan alter a little bit fighting a guy like Bilal, who's, who's pretty tough to finish? I mean, he's got two career losses. Only one of those uh, was by stoppage. Do, does the game plan change at all, or you just keep it the same? Uh, keep, keep it the same. Um, I'm going to go for the finish. If I don't get it, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm not going to rush it or force it. You know, if it happens that I go to the decision, then I go to the decision. But the game plan is always to finish the fight, but wherever, whatever happens, happens. And I imagine training camp, uh, pretty much the same at Fortis, uh, same same training partners. And anything new you've added or just uh, keep things, it, you know, it's like that saying, you know, if it ain't broken, don't try and fix it, right? Still still the same thing. Uh, the only thing new is I uh, started incorporating uh, more strength and conditioning because I never really used to do that. But uh, I started doing that more and I've really feel the results from that. So that's probably the only thing that I changed. Okay. And, and how is that going? How did that get linked up with you, uh, you know, working? I imagine this is someone new you're working with. Yeah, we have, there's this guy named uh, Mike Skacia. He trains at a place called Extreme Studio Performance. Uh, a lot of the other guys, they were going there for the camp, like Bird, uh, Rashad, uh, Ramiz, everybody, they were going there training. And I, I was, and I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm not doing that. Especially before my last fight, because I was already mid-camp when they were, whenever they were doing it. I didn't want to change anything up. But now that I'm fresh on the new camp, I was like, I might as well go ahead and do this. Because I've seen how in shape they were, and I'm like, dang, I want some of that too. And your gym has been on a roll this year. I mean, if you guys aren't win gym of the year or at least are nominated, I mean, you got to be up there. I think this was really sort of the coming out year for Fortis MMA. Um, what does that mean to be part of that? I mean, you've had some great success this year, but you just had Diego Ferreira pick up a big win. Like, like what does that mean to be a part of this team that's finally getting their due? It, it, it means a lot. It means a lot, but uh, I don't want to, like, relish in this moment. You know, this is this, like, you know what I mean? We could fall off right now. You know, we, we still got, we have a lot of work to do to establish ourselves as the gym, you know, we can be the best this year, but what are we going to be next year? 
Yeah, no, that that's true for sure. Um, so this fight's uh, obviously after the holidays. Um, how do you navigate through the holiday season, and, and how's the weight cut going right now? Weight cut's going good. The holidays really don't bother me. I'm so used to it. I've been fighting for almost nine years, so I've, I've missed many Christmases and uh, many Thanksgivings. It's nothing. It's just another another day. Who's going to be cornering you in this fight? Um, my coach, uh, Safe, and then... Um, I got my uh, other coach, uh, Krukasip, he's coming down, and then um, who else is coming? Uh, David Bertolino, that's my wrestling coach. Nice. Okay, that's good. And uh, how do you see this fight playing out? Are we going to see another highlight reel finish in this fight? Yeah, you, you just might. Have, we'll see. I don't want to... Don't want to give away fucking, the game plan. I get it. I get it. You know, don't want to give away the game plan. <laughs> yeah, got to keep it under wraps. Yeah. And where do you feel like a win over Bilal puts you? Because, again, he's a guy that's been a mainstay in the UFC the last couple of years. He always puts on good fights. I would imagine that's going to propel you pretty high up the rankings. It's going to put me where he's at. You know what I mean? I want where he's at. Like, he's at a good place in UFC. You know what I mean? He has a, uh, he's at a spot in UFC where he has some sort of job security in the, as far as UFC is concerned, and I want that, you know? Right now I'm on the outskirts. You know what I mean? Two losses, I could be cut. So if I get a good win over him, then I'm in there. Uh, holiday season's coming up, like I mentioned. Favorite Christmas movie? Are you a guy that gets into the spirit uh, during the holiday season? Oh, not at all. <laughs> I, I really do. I don't love watch Christmas movies. I, I do get in the spirit, but Christmas movies is just not my thing. Not, not even Die Hard? Die, die, I, can, I can do a Die Hard, yeah. Because <laughs> that counts. I don't care what people say, man. Yeah. That is a Christmas movie as far as I'm concerned. If, that, if that's considered a Christmas movie, then I can, I can get with that. Are you going to get together with family though at all on the, on, on the day, or, or is it just you're going to try and take another shift and you know take advantage of that? No, I, I'm going to get with I'm going to get some family. My parents are going to come down. They're going to stop by and uh, see me before they head to Arkansas, and then I'm going to go uh, with my uh, girlfriend's family, and then we're going to celebrate with my daughter and their family. D does the girlfriend's family get the whole fighting thing in terms of like, hey, you know, we want you to have some cake and gravy and all this stuff, and you're like, eh, I got a fight coming up. They they understand. They understand. They still ask me, but. I'm like, no, I can't. They're like, okay, well, we got some salad in the fridge. I'm like, all right. <laughs> uh, two more quick questions. Number one, uh, are you getting more noticed at the restaurant now? Are people finally coming up and saying, hey, man, I saw your highlight and things like that? Or is it still, uh, you still kind of undercover working at Moxie's? Still undercover. We, you, I get a couple people, but those are the people that either went to the fight or like are, are serious MMA fans, you know? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sure eventually, I mean, it's only gonna be a matter of time where you, you might have to, you know, start putting on one of those like, uh, you know, glasses with the big nose or something. Uh -huh. So people don't recognize exactly. it because it's going to interrupt the work and you got to get those tips, right? That's important. So, uh, and we'll last question, and, and the last question for you is something I know we joked about last time. Are people still adding your dad to Facebook because you have the same uh, name? No, he, uh, he, he changed his name on Facebook. Oh, good. He, uh, Smart. He I was going to say yeah. his middle name is, uh, Edward. So he changed his name just to Edward Neal on his Facebook. Good. So there won't so be any confusion. Because I, I can only imagine how that conversation went where your dad's probably like, who is this person adding me? Like, it has nothing to do with my circle. So. <laughs> yeah. First world problems, as they say. Uh, Jeff, I'm super stoked for this fight, man. It's going to be awesome. Uh, first UFC on ESPN card. It's coming up here January 19th. Uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media. Uh, and if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Um, you can find me on social media uh, on my Facebook, Jeff C. Neal. Uh, Instagram and Twitter is uh, Hands of Steel MMA. Make sure you spell it H A N D Z of Steel. And then, uh, big shout out to Fit Meals Prep. They've been helping me, you know, give me free food. Can't complain about free food. It's awesome food. It doesn't even feel like I'm dieting. It's really, it's really solid food.